Hello, everyone. My name is Shaylin Herrick. I am the Director of Marketing here at SOS Online Backup. We're just going to get started here in a couple of minutes, and I wanted to do a quick audio-visual check with you. If you could please type in the questions tool that you can hear me and that you can see my screen. That will let me know that we are good to go. Nick says all good. Excellent, Nick. Andrew says all good to go. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so while we're waiting for a few more people to get on, I'm going to put a poll up on the screen. And this question is, while we're waiting, what do you want to learn about? So I can see your answers um, as, you, as you respond on the screen, so that'll give us a good idea of what we should talk about today. I know that um, the market in Australia and New Zealand is pretty exciting and a lot of new things are happening and new opportunities opening up with the NBN becoming um, more and more ever-present in, in every territory. Okay, so it looks like mostly everybody wants to hear about product and back-end technology and what is the price? Greg says he wants to hear about price. Okay. <coughs> We can absolutely do that. We will cover all those things for you. Okay, we've got 54% voted. So I'll go ahead and close that poll and then get on to the webinar. Our conversation is going to start with what is the industry like? Um, I know not everybody necessarily wanted to hear about very much about that, but we'll go through it very quickly. So how does SOS Online Backup fit into the industry and what's going on in the industry? What's the opportunity for you as managed service providers? And while I'm talking, please go ahead and feel free to use the questions tool to let me know about any questions that you have and about your business. I mean, we're here for you, so we want to hear about your business, um, what you have questions about regarding your opportunity, the product, technology. We'll answer all of those today. So SOS Online Backup was started in Melbourne, Australia in 2001 and moved to the United States in around 2006. And at that time, um, broadband was, was in its infancy. It doesn't really seem like it was that long ago, but 2006 in, in Internet years was quite a while ago. Um, things were much slower. So a lot has changed since back then. In that time, we've acquired over 500,000 active customers and over 600, this is 500, but really I should say 600, active value-added reseller partners like yourself. We've continued to improve our product really on a monthly basis and give new releases to our reseller partners. So what are the big important macroeconomic trends that have led to the proliferation of online backup? Number one, like I said, is internet bandwidth. You guys are living and breathing that in Australia right now. As internet gets faster in more locations, more people are going to create digital data, and they're going to put it up in the cloud. And they're going to do it maybe without even realizing it, but you have the opportunity to inform them that they can put it up in the cloud and protect their data because it has a great deal of value. So also, hosted storage costs have decreased over time. Back in 2006, not a lot of people put things up in the cloud. Most people back things up with tape, and that's because it was just so much cheaper, as you guys know. And also, the sophistication of the population has increased. People know more about the Internet. People know about technology associated with the Internet. If you ask people what Facebook is, they would probably know that it's in the cloud. They would know that it's not really on their computer. They know that it's somewhere else. They know that it's off-site. And I alluded to this a few seconds ago, but the other thing that's driving online backup adoption is the size and significance and the value of digital data that people are creating. You're taking pictures on your phones all the time. So am I. All, my entire honeymoon is stored on my phone. And of course, that's a precious memory to me, so of course I backed it up. Now I know no matter, no matter what happens to my phone, no matter what happens to my computer, I can always get it back. In the bottom right of this slide, we have a really, really important stat for you guys. Um, about two years ago, IDC did a survey of businesses, small, medium-sized businesses. So we classify those as people with employees of 500 to 1,000 employees. 16% of companies surveyed by the IDC said that they are using online backup today. 
that's not a lot. 69% so that they're evaluating it or planning to use it. Now that's a lot. That's a huge opportunity for businesses like yours to get in there and sell to these guys, sell them online backup, which is something that they absolutely need and want. We've also got a white paper uh, called the 2012 Outlook for Managed Service Providers, and your partner specialist here at SOS can provide that to you. I actually wrote it. I'm quite proud of it. It's an excellent overview of what small to medium sized businesses are looking for when they're shopping for online backup. They're looking for security. They're looking for mobile management. They're looking for encryption. They're looking for um, compliance with government regulations. They're looking for all these things to make them feel good and secure about the solution. And fortunately, SOS Online Backup offers a reseller program that can provide that for you. I'd like to pause for just a second and welcome our CEO, Ken Shaw. He just walked into the room. G'day, everybody. I don't want to interrupt. I'm sure Sharon's doing a good job, but um, given that this was a webinar for our Australian and New Zealand audience, I wanted to come in and say hello. How's it all going? We've got many questions coming through on the line. I'm sure Sharon explained that you've got to ask a question to go in the draw for the uh, Kindle giveaway that we're doing. So um, make sure you use those questions, that questions tool and ask lots of questions as we're going through. I actually hadn't, so thanks, Ken, for mentioning that. Oh, right. Well, just so everybody got that, uh, to go in the draw for the Kindle Fire that we're giving away, you've got to ask a question using the GoToMeetings questions tool. Um, and, of course, that will help keep the conversation lively as well. So uh, do do that. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Back to you, Sharon. Thank you, Ken. So please keep those questions coming, and John and I are more than happy to answer anything about industry, price, technology, anything you like. All right. So we talked a little bit ago about how the price of online backup is changing in comparison to what used to be used for backup, which was tape. Um, it's now much more affordable and much more reliable than tape uh, currently is or really ever has been. So. This, is, this slide is really just an allusion to the idea of the fact that it's kind of silly not to put your data up in the cloud. And as you know now, 69% of businesses are intending to put their data up in the cloud. I sure hope that they go to you to do it. So we want to talk about what businesses want. You want to offer them an online backup product that they actually want, right? We want to make sure that it has total business data protection. Now, this information comes from our understanding of the industry as well as some external survey data, like IDC data. We know that businesses want total business protection. They want to be able to back up workstations, laptops, servers, and mobile devices, all with one single program. They want total business continuity and disaster recovery. They want to back up their servers. They, like I said, they want to back up their operating data. They want to back up their system data. We have a question from Nick. Do you have an ROI model for business customers we can use? Absolutely. Um, when you call in and speak to our partner specialist, they will do an ROI analysis with you. So they will take into account your existing customers and what you think you can sell them. This isn't us dictating to you what we think that you can sell them, but this is us listening to you and um, doing an actual ROI result. Uh, Nick says, F&B customers rarely know how to calculate ROI. They look at cloud backup versus a removable USB hard drive. Yeah, and that's a, another feature that we include in our program that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, we offer you complete disaster recovery plan templates, so you can really provide that total value of a, a backup and disaster recovery plan in that template. So when you sign up with the SOS 360-degree partner program, what exactly are you getting? You're getting a lot of stuff. You're getting a total business in a box. Mm -hmm. You will be able to have your own website template. And for those of you in Australia, you'll be able to sell with an integrated billing platform through eWay, uh, which you may have heard. We also offer integrated billing through Authorize.net and PayPal and PayPal Pro. This website template will allow you to sell online backup. It will allow you to provide rebranded sales and marketing materials, which of course you can do on if you like to. It will allow you to email your existing client base. And your branding, of course, will be customized. You'll be able to have your logo on there. So it gives you a web presence, which you may have not otherwise had previously. And of course, SOS Online Backup is an award-winning software that you'll be able to sell online. We'll be able to have this stuff up and running for you in less than three weeks. 
you guys have any questions about this opportunity, this is a, a really complicated opportunity, you know, um, but very, very inclusive. Um, in the SOS 360 Degree Partner Program, we also give you weekly live trainings, which you're free to attend as much or as little as you want to, but we certainly encourage you to do so. Andrew has a question, can it be integrated into our existing website? Um, it can be a part of your existing website if you like it to. And, yeah, and Andrew, I'll just jump in there. There's generally three ways of handling billing with, with our partner program. One is using um, the web integration package, which Sean's talking to here, which is sort of a jump start web presence and e-commerce portal that you can use. So this is sort of targeted at smaller resellers who may not already have e-commerce enablement. Um, second uh, way, the most common way is to use your own billing systems and just interact with our back-end portal where you can provision accounts and then you sell them through you know, your own portal to your customers. And the third way is to hook into our API. So if you've got a website and you've already got e-commerce enabled, if you wanted to integrate this offering with your existing billing solutions or CRM or however you're currently transacting your services to your customers, you can just hook in directly to our, our web services API to do it that way. Great. Thanks, Ken. So how does our reseller program compare to others out there on the market? You guys may have talked to Internus, Doya and Segra, XZ, maybe Yase. The biggest differentiator that's extremely important for you is that we have a data center in Australia. All these other guys, no data center in Australia. I think that probably takes care of Paul's question, where is storage hardware data center located, US, Australia, et cetera. We do have a data center in Melbourne. So you can elect for all of your data to be backed up there if you like to. We also have data centers in a couple different locations in the US, uh, Canada, UK, India, and Ukraine. You can choose any of those. They're all available to you. We do have eight by five customer, I'm sorry, partner support here in the Los Angeles office. We also have 24 by five support um, in the India office. We offer, as you just saw, rebranded sales materials, website template, online sales capability, and the other guys, sorry, they just don't hold a candle to us on that one. They offer rebranded sales materials, which you can slap your own logo on, but the, the experience is just not the same, and the breadth of information available just isn't the same. And, of course, no web presence if you don't already have a web presence. And I'd love to know, if you guys don't already have a web presence, um, please pop in the questions tool. I'd like to know how many of you uh, do or do not have one. Another big differentiator is that we do not have a hardware purchase required. Many other guys require hardware purchases as well as significant cash up front investments in order to get started. SOS just doesn't. You're able to definitely get a significant discount if you buy an annual plan up front, but you can also pay monthly. Paul has a question, so is there an option to store in our own data center? Um, Paul, in large deals we, generally, we, we do do that sometimes, so um, usually that's more of a sort of custom partner offering rather than one of the off-the-shelf offerings. Um, the, typical, the typical off-the-shelf partner offering leverages our data centers which is usually sort of more secure and scalable and frankly cheaper um, most of the time than running your own, running this kind of storage infrastructure out of your own data center. Um, but that, those options do exist, so you should chat to your partner specialist about that sort of, op, uh, that sort of an idea. Um, we're doing that with a few partners in Australia at the moment. Um, and so yeah, that is there, but the, the recommended way is to leverage our infrastructure. It generally works out as more cost effective for you. Ben's got a very interesting question to follow up to that. We're an ISP with our own transit and data center, um, can we do that? Yeah, well, well, so Ben, if you're an ISP and you've got your, you know, you've got that kind of infrastructure, uh, I'll show you, I was just saying, drag the questions up. Oh, the screen so yeah, 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 sure. Um, then certainly we can talk about that, um, and we, we've done that before, particularly in Australia. Um, so if you've got your own physical infrastructure and network infrastructure that you want to leverage, then talk to your partner specialist about that, or um, perhaps ask to speak to Jeff McCauley, our Vice President of Sales, um, and any of the do you know who your partner specialist is, uh, Paul? Uh, actually, that's a good question for everybody. Do you all know who your partner specialist is? Uh, if, if not, just type don't know into the questions tool and we'll make sure to follow up and uh, get you properly introduced to your partner specialist. Um, okay, most people are saying don't know. Okay, so right. great. If you don't know, just, just type that in and we'll, we'll fix that for you. And Paul, um, when, uh, when, you <laughs> when somebody contacts you, which will probably be tomorrow, um, just mention that you're looking at self-hosting, that you are an ISP, and uh, I'll, I'll make a note to get Jeff McCauley to get in touch with you, because um, that may be 
yeah, that may be a better way for you to go if, if you're an ISP. Yep, absolutely. Um, someone asked a question about the prices up here on the screen. These are your per gigabyte per month prices for your cloud storage. So compared to other providers, we're extremely cost effective. And we don't control what you guys mark up and what you make your margin at. So you can do that however you like. Um, this is just your base wholesale price. And yes, it is in US dollars. So Craig, it's probably a little cheaper for you that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I'd like to pause really quickly here and do another one of our polls. Um, I want to ask you guys, how many servers do your clients need to back up? I promise this is the last one of these that we will do. I'm going to launch it. And please go ahead and, and keep asking questions. Uh, ben asks, does the pricing apply to the AU, Australia Data Center Storage? Um, if you do want exclusive Australia data center storage, there is a slight surcharge for that. Unfortunately, I, I really wish Jeff McCauley was here. He'd be able to correct me and tell me exactly what that was. Sure. But ben, what, what, most people, what most of our partners in Australia do is they offer their customers two price points. They offer them an exclusively onshore you know, within Australia option, and they offer them the offshore American option. Um, and usually the, the partner's customer, your customers, will, will offer the cheaper option. Um, but that's the way we handle the surcharge. We sort of give you both price tier options and you can pass that through to your customers. Uh, most businesses don't care. There are some businesses, say government and healthcare, um, who, can be, who can be quite um, concerned about the geography in which the data is stored at the end of the day. Uh, Andrew asks, are there any charges over the cost per gigabyte? Um, Andrew, it, sort of the pricing model is based around mainly uh, actually service seats, not really price per gigabyte is the most important thing. So the, the service safe fund, we're going to get to a pricing slide in a few slides time, so perhaps we'll wait till then to talk in great depth about it. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more questions then and, and we'll be able to really get into it. Um, Nick says he's got 1.5 servers per customer, but lots of customers. That's great, Nick. Congratulations. Uh, Richard says, do you have provisions for Vasco DigiPass security token options? No, Richard, we don't. We, we do have a single sign-on infrastructure, which could potentially be leveraged. Um, sounds like you're selling to sort of, uh, who are your customers, Richard? Enterprise, government? Um, so we, we do have an SSO infrastructure that could potentially be leveraged for that, um, but it's not part of our standard offering. Okay. 74% of you voted, so I'm going to close this poll and uh, get on with the presentation. And what were the results of that, show? Um, we've got 64% of us on the line have our customers with one to five servers. 21% have five to ten. Okay, great. Yeah. So we've got some really interesting businesses on the line. We're really happy to have you guys here. So what is the SOS Only Backup product suite? Um, SOS Only Backup is a company. Our mission is to be able to back up an entire business, no matter what you've got. Absolutely everything from your mobile phones to your systems. We want to back it all up. So if you start at the very top of the clock, we call this a clock, it's 360 degrees, and head over to your right, the first thing that you'll see is back up your system data. You want to back up your operating systems, your physical to virtual, um, your physical, physical to virtual backups. We want to do bare metal backups, and we do our SOS service day product, which is available to our partners, and we'll get to pricing on very soon. Annual to demo of. Um, is that solution to backing up your system data as well as your app data. SOS Service Day backs up SQL servers, Exchange servers, SharePoint servers, Windows servers, file servers, all of it in one suite. Like we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, SMBs and your SMB customers want to be able to back up their entire business with one solution. They don't want to go to different piecemeal solutions. Maybe you guys can tell me if you're currently doing that. I know a lot of the partners that come over to our program are using like three or four different programs to back up their clients' businesses. Additionally, in the SOS Service Day program, um, you can back up complete file data. This is, this is images, documents, music, videos, everything. We don't limit what you can back up. Additionally, we don't throttle your backups. You can back up um, as quickly as your connection will allow you to. We offer iPhone backup and recovery, and we will soon be offering generic Android, I'm sorry, generic brand, that I should be very specific, um, iPhone, back, I'm sorry, Android backup and recovery for you guys. We back up PCs. We back up Facebook. We've got a few questions here. Um, so Nick asks, does SOS work with SharePoint online on Office 365? Uh, Nick, if you've got hosted 
if you've got hosted SharePoint through Office 365, then no, we don't back that up because it's all running on you know the, the Microsoft Compute Cloud servers. But if you're running SharePoint on premises, then absolutely we back that up. Um, Andrew asks, any Linux or Unix operating system supported? Andrew, uh, yes and no. <laughs> we've got no native support for Linux and Unix. However, we've got a lot of customers who are backing up Linux and Unix, and they're doing it through uh, like an SMB or Samba share on the network, uh, which is then being read from a Windows box. So the, a typical deployment pattern in a medium-sized company is to drop a, an SOS staging server, quote unquote, in the network, which is just a white box. So it's a, a fancy label for what is just a Windows-based machine with a little bit of internal storage then all of your endpoints on your network will back up to that machine, and that machine will back up to the cloud. Now that's actually relevant to um, to Richard's question. Richard says, I've been doing on-site backups because in Canberra our upload speeds are rather low. Um, so Richard, using that SOS sort of staging server deployment pattern, which is, again, it's just where all the laptops back up to a single machine, and then we replicate that machine to the cloud. Using that pattern, even if you've got a slow uplink, um, cloud backup is very viable because you've got fast fast backups happening across the LAN at 100 megabits or gigabit Ethernet, and then the replication of the cloud might take days or weeks, but that doesn't really matter because it's happening asynchronously in the background. Great. Thanks, Ken. So we've gone over what's included in SOS Server Save. Let's just look at it a different way and make sure that um, we're all totally clear on what is there. Exchange backup and granular recovery. A lot of your customers probably have Exchange servers um, in their businesses, and they need to back them up, and they want to be able to recover mail, messages, and contacts more. You want to be their hero, right? You want to be able to get back anything that they may accidentally delete or that may be destroyed unintentionally. Um, it includes what we call bare metal image creator. So this is um, offered to us by Shadow Protect, which I know many of you are probably familiar with. It's a, definitely a industry-leading bare metal image creation software. And we send those images straight up into the cloud for your recovery to dissimilar hardware later on. This suite of software includes Online Backup and Recovery Manager. So this is the tool that you will use to get everything back up into the cloud. Um, you will use this to get your bare metal images up into the cloud, your files, your folders your PCs, laptops, anything that you want to back up, you're going to use Online Backup and Recovery Manager to get it up in the cloud, and we're going to see that here in a little bit. You're going to use it to get it back down out of the cloud as, as well yeah. when you need it. Um, <laughs> I've got a question here. Ben's asking about the staging server you're talking about. Would this be with your backup software locally? Ben, it, it, it would. You'd use our backup <laughs> software to back up locally and to the cloud. Um, actually, Shailen, do you want to just, let me just we'll go forward to that. While we're on that point, we'll, we'll the, the, the point of this slide is really that we're on right now. This is really going to come out when John does a demo in just a couple of minutes. Um, but this deployment pattern that we're talking about, just to finish this thought, um, so on the left-hand side here, we've got a little diagram which depicts what we're talking about, Ben. You can back up servers directly to the SOS cloud. The whole right-hand side of this diagram is the cloud. Um, so ignore that. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Um, using the software stack, you can back up, say, Small payloads, we say less than a terabyte, back them up directly to the cloud. The larger payloads, or where you, you're, um, you know, you've got a slow uplink, um, like we were talking about a moment ago in Canberra, then you would use this pattern at the top here, where you'd replicate a file server, where you'd back up a file server across the LAN to the staging environment, and then replicate from the staging environment to our cloud. As part of the service safe suite. Um, and this was the segue I was making from Shannon's previous slide, you're getting software that handles all of these endpoints. In fact, you're also getting software that handles all of these endpoints. So you've got software to back up a Mac, an iPhone, an Android, tablet devices, laptops, whether they're PCs or, or OS X, as well as then software to back up database servers, exchange email servers. Um, we're very much a sort of a relatively Microsoft-oriented shop. So when we say database server, we're, we're mainly talking about SQL Server. When we say email server, we're mainly talking about Exchange Server. Um, and then file servers of all stripes. So you, you get a different endpoint client for all of these different environments, and the staging server pattern makes sense in some of those cases. The two primary cases where it makes the most sense is if, A, the payload is very large, um, as in the case of a multi-terabyte file server, or, B, your uplink is low, like Richard's got a problem with in Canberra. Uh, hopefully that answers the question for you, Ben. All right, so we've got some other questions here. Um, 
Greg asks, is that a complete image of the SQL Server or selected databases? Greg, it can be either, so it depends how you want to set it up. Uh, Richard writes, most of my clients' main concerns are due to the trust protection for their data, which is why most hold back on cloud storage. So Richard, um, built into our whole security model is, is the idea that we should not be able to access the data of the customer. So with our ultra-safe security option, and uh, it's actually on the next slide, the one Sharon's presentation, um, we use AES encryption um, client side with an, an ultra safe. It's not with a managed key. So all that's a fancy way of saying that we can't get to the customer's data. You can't even get to the customer's data. It's encrypted with um, the, the US government standard for encryption. AES 128 is what's rated by the US government to back up or protect secret government data. AES 256 is what's rated by NIST to back up top secret government data. So generally, um, that that client-side private key encryption approach solves most customers' security concerns. Here in America, the, the key regulatory frameworks that relate to data protection and privacy are HIPAA and Sarbanes-Oxley, or Sarbox, um, and we're compliant with both of those regulatory regimes. So a lot of information on security that we can give you and give your customers, but uh, generally speaking, we're sort of known in the industry as, as being a leading vendor from a security standpoint. And we do, in fact, have banks and government customers and um, government customers from all around the world, frankly, using our product because of those things. Yeah, and just to uh, capitalize on Ken's statement, our data centers are also Tier 3 and Tier 4 data centers, so nobody's getting in there. They're, they're um, monitored by video surveillance, you're monitored by 24-7 watch, and then, of course, on top of that, your data is encrypted. Right. Um, Andrew asks, is there any deduplication at source to minimize traffic going over the WAN? Uh, Andrew, there is between large files, but generally speaking, we don't do any deduplication across account boundaries. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's another big part of our whole approach to security, is that we, we don't believe in doing um, you know, dedupe across customer accounts uh, simply because that then requires the software to have visibility into binary data you know, between different enterprises. So it's sort of part of our sandbox security model that we, that we don't do that. Um, Richard writes, you don't mention crash plan. Richard, um, I mean, there are lots of people we don't mention. That Mosey and Carbonite are the two major vendors in, in the US. If you Google online backup here, you get Mosey, Carbonite, then SOS. Um, so we're generally sort of just focusing on our, on our primary competitors. Um, but sure, there are lots of other vendors, crash plans, you know, one of many. We're also focusing on competitors that have reseller programs, and right. crash plan really doesn't focus on that. So this particular slide is to show you the big difference between SOS Service Day of SOS for Business and then standard Carbonite and Mosey programs. They're very, very different. In the next slide, we're going to get into how SOS Service Day compares against who its real true competitors are. So let's go ahead and go over there. So SOS Service Dave is designed to compete in the Zenith, Intronus, full um, online backup, uh, I'm sorry, I should say business backup and server backup suite products. And still, um, it's just it's feature-wise heads and tails above uh, where those other guys are. Um, a lot of our competitors fall down, particularly in mobile management. Um, they don't allow mobile or flexible access to any data that's backed up, files, folders, images, etc. John's going to show you how well that works out later on. Also, they're very limited in the number of seats per account that um, they're allowed to back up. Uh, we don't care. <laughs> you can back up as, as many seats, as many laptops, workstations as you like with our products. We want to give you that flexibility to make as much money as you can. And the key differentiator between these sorts of categories of vendors is whether they've got a server backup solution or not. So Richard's writing, um, got some more commentary here about CrashPlan. Richard, CrashPlan really doesn't have a server backup solution. Um, so they've got a great laptop backup solution, um, but not so much a server backup solution. They don't really have a, a partner offering either, frankly. Their, their channel offering is, is rather limited. Um, so if you're looking for sort of a, a, a channel play, which is presumably why you're at today's webinar, uh, and also a solution that backs up endpoints as well as servers, then we're probably a good fit and some of these other vendors are here. Um, if you just had laptops and you're looking for more of an affiliate style play where you make maybe 10% commission, then crash plan might be worth looking at. But if you want to make an, really an unlimited amount of margin and sell to a lot of businesses, then we're much more up your alley. Well, not necessarily unlimited. Most of our farmers make 50% gross margin just to give everybody sort of the, the goods. Um, so we'll see pricing in a minute, but effectively 50% margin is where our partners start and it goes up from there based on volume. 
So uh, I don't know if Shannon covered this, but between 75 and 80% uh, of the companies of SOS sort of revenue comes from partners and from the channel. So we're extremely channel focused. That number fluctuates over time and from month to month. But generally speaking, we're a, we're a, a partner company. We you know we've got a thousand MSPs around the world who are driving our product and selling it to their customers, mainly selling it to their business customers, and that's what we live and breathe. Um, companies like Crash Plan. Uh, Mosey Carbonite very focused on their own brand and they have affiliate style reseller programs which are good for sort of consumers and really good if you've got maybe on a website and you can get you know a little bit of revenue from that but if you're a managed service provider you're an IT provider you want to offer managed backup as a service then the companies I'd recommend you look at are uh, Zenith, uh, Doyens, Asigra, Asa, SOS where the main players over on in partner land. Yeah. And we're also really proud of all the awards that we've won. Um, we've won the PC Magazine Editor's Choice Award four times. So that's just a, is a test to the quality of our software and workmanship and engineering, if those two words go together. <laughs> so let's go on to the competitive landscape. Um, if you guys are at all familiar with SOS Online Backup History, um, we played very, very well in the file and folder area, and that's where we've won all of our awards for the last several years. Back in November um, of the past year, 2011, we launched SOS Server Save, and that completely changed the arena in which our, comp our, our resellers could play in, as well as ourselves. As you guys probably know, the file and folder online backup area is pretty crowded. It's this blue square that's on the screen right now. There's a lot in there. And you'll notice crash plans mentioned on this slide. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thanks, Ken. Okay, so when we introduced SOS Server Save and made it available to our partners, how did this change our business as well as our partner's business? It made it massively bigger and massively more flexible. By joining the SOS Reseller Program, or what's called the SOS 360 Degree Partner Program, you can compete in all of these new areas. You can compete in micro-business, SMB, enterprise, and, as, and uh, as selling enterprise servers. You'll be able to do bare metal to the cloud, bare metal local, SQL backup, exchange backup, and file and folder backup all with one system. As we've talked about, it's monumentally important to SMBs to be able to back up their entire businesses with one system. And of course, it cuts down on administrative costs for you and just makes your life easier. It's worth stopping here just for a moment. This slide is sort of quite important because everybody in today's audience should be able to draw, sort of take a pen and draw a box around a subset of this diagram to identify your customer base. So the, the rows here represent market segments with consumers at the top um, going down through micro businesses, small businesses, and then enterprise laptop fleets, which we treat differently to enterprise data centers. And across the, in the columns, you've got different types of backup from a functionality standpoint that you need to deliver. Um, so bam, all the things Shailen just rattled off. None of our partners tackle all of these markets. Right, so most of you probably live in the micro business and small business rows of this diagram, and you probably could live in a couple of, you know, in, in many of the columns. But so most of our partners will take this slide, identify which subset of these markets they're attacking, um, and use that to really design the solution they're going to they're going to go to market with using the SOS technology stack. Um, so to you know, comments earlier about some of the other vendors, Mosey and Carbonite usually sort of and Crash Plan, they all exist on the top right of this diagram. Consumer, small business, micro business, um, file and folder backup. Now, down the bottom left of the, this diagram, people who can do bare metal backup to the cloud and even boot your servers in our cloud with our cloud boot service and run them in our, in our cloud computing infrastructure. There, frankly, are hardly any companies on earth that can do that. So you've got a, a wide spectrum that gets spanned here, and depending on who your customers are, um, we, we, we may, we probably have a, a product for you. Um, so. Yeah, there's a good slide to sort of maybe look at later when you talk to your partner specialist. You can you can get a copy of this slide deck, um, and it's worth taking this taking five minutes and figuring out where your customers fit into this landscape. Uh, got a couple of questions here. We'll take. Um, Andrew asks, how often does it talk to the cloud? As soon as they change a file, um, does it change right away? Andrew, it depends how you set it up to run. It can it can monitor a file continuously, but that generally takes more system resources than it's worth. So most people set it up to run on an hourly schedule or a daily schedule. Uh, the real-time monitoring is available. Richard writes, my clients will not allow data offshore. Have you mentioned a local data center? Richard, we've got a data center in, on King Street in Melbourne. 
So uh, yeah, you can keep your data within Australia exclusively if that's required. Uh, a different Richard writes, so you can run the virtual server in the cloud. Uh, Richard, yeah, that's an exciting offering that we started offering out very recently to partners. It's our cloud boot service offering, and, and John can probably talk about this if there are more questions about it. But it's it's sort of the ultimate vision for us as a with the service of product, where if we're taking bare metal images of servers and we're replicating those to the cloud, well, the ultimate in data protection is if your building burns down, you can punch a ticket and you can actually then have that that machine converted into a virtual machine, booted in a hypervisor in our cloud, and made available to you. <coughs> excuse me, I'm coming down with something. Made available to you running in our cloud infrastructure with a production server available on a public IP that you can connect back to. So true disaster recovery and true warm failover to a, to a running virtual machine. Um, there are very few vendors on earth who do it. Um, we're one of them and it's sort of an exciting new well vector that our company is proceeding on. It's the bottom left of this diagram. It's really the future of what SO, the SOS service Safe products evolving into. Real-time data protection and, and cloud replication with full failover to a, a running virtual machine in our cloud boot hypervisor infrastructure. And Nick, I think that probably answers your question too. Um, right, yep it does. Uh, Richard also writes, as a number of my clients are roadies, trades, et cetera, that will benefit from remote server access to files, et cetera, without logging in. Richard, um, yeah, so the cloud boot offering may be, may be dead on for your customers, uh, may not be, but it's, it certainly is the holy grail in, in data protection and backup to be able to recover a running server um, hours after you know, the primary server failed. All right, so okay. let's so go on. Let's get on to pricing. I know everyone really wanted to hear about that. Um, first of all, these prices are in US dollars, so please do keep that in mind. We've got four main entry points into the SOS 363 Partner Program. We've got Server Save 5, which means you get five server licenses, which you can utilize at, at any time um, with any server type. So let's say, for example, you've got two SQL servers and three Exchange servers. Well, you can use them. You can use Service Day 5 to back up all those. Let's say that that's flipped. You have three SQL servers and you have two Exchange servers. But you can do that too. These, uh, these licenses, these server licenses are completely <coughs> flexible. So Service Day 5 comes with one terabyte of space. We also don't care how you want to provision that. If you have a business that you want to back up, that needs five servers to back up to the cloud, but they don't have any laptops to back up, well, what are you going to do with your terabyte? Well, you can sell it to another business. This package is completely flexible that way. Um, the monthly price is $399. If you were to sell all five of those server licenses, as well as the space for what we recommend the suggested retail price to be at $129, that's $129 each, you'd be making $246 per month. Now. That's, of course, not where the party ends. If you were backing up 25 servers, which it sounds like uh, some of you out there may be, you could be making $2,300 a month margin at our suggested retail price. Now, a lot of our partners are selling server backup for much more than $129 per month. Many of them are selling as much as $500 per month. And if you feel like you've got a service offering um, that is that is so complete, as you should be, because you, you should and can offer complete disaster recovery services, you should have no problem being able to sell your server backups for that amount of money on a monthly basis. So we've got a couple more questions. Nick asked, um, just for the disaster recovery, I guess, um, or can we move to the legacy service to your hypervisor and run them permanently? Nick, it's just for DR purposes. Um, so we're actually still fine-tuning all the rules of Cloud Boot, but um, the, the current offering is based around running in that cloud for two weeks. Um, so it's, a, it's for disaster recovery purposes, definitely. Uh, ben asks, would you count a Mac OS X server as a client or a server? Ben, would actually count as a client, believe it or not. <laughs> um, so, yeah, at the moment, um, we treat all Mac OS X instances as um, just endpoint nodes, so you've got a thousand of those in the basic package. Any other questions on pricing? This, this, we usually get a lot of questions on this slide. Yeah, so please let us know, is it confusing you? <laughs> is it befuddling? Is it totally clear? Uh, we want to make sure that it's, it's super clear that you can start in this program for as low as $399 per month. 
What it really, well, the question this sort of causes our customers to ask themselves is this, can I sell this service to my customers for $129 a month? So the offering to your business, your, your business customers is something like this, for $129 a month, we'll back up all of the workstations and laptops in your business, and we'll back up your servers as well. Um, we're replicating all that to the cloud, you'll have mobile access, you can access data on iPhones, all of these other ancillary benefits. But the core thing is, for the same price as your DSL connection, we'll give you complete data insurance for your servers and endpoints. Can you sell it for $129 a month? I sure hope you can. I hope you can sell some more. Well, let's put it to the audience. How do you feel about that price point? So um, usually we get answers that people are very confident that they can sell this bundled suite of solutions to their customers at, at that $130 a month price point. Yeah, Nick feels good about it. Great. Uh, Craig has a really relevant question. Can we add more storage than what is listed here? Absolutely you can. Um, these programs are very flexible. These are just entry points. So let's say you don't want service save 5, but you want service save 7. You can get seven licenses if you feel like that's what you need to have available to sell to your customers. Uh, we can customize these things for you. These are just entry points. Let's say you want server save seven with two terabytes. No problem. We can do that. And still, just as I said before, you can provision those gigs and those server licenses however you like to. Richard asks, is five minimum? Yes, it is. That is our number one entry point and our most popular. Paul asks, is the one terabyte of space per server license or for the total five server licenses? In this particular plan, it is for the total five server licenses, but you can add more and you can use it however you like. Ben asks, how does the extra storage cost work? Is this an overage charge or can you pre-purchase for lower cost? All of your costs are lower costs. Um, since you are buying wholesale, you are getting your gigs, um, no matter how you purchase them, at a lower than retail price. Richard asks, how quick can we upgrade the cloud space? As quick as you want. Um, you call us up and you'll have more cloud space within, what, 24 hours, John? Yeah, I mean, it, it could be uh, <clears throat> sooner than that. So I know you guys are in Australia, but uh, you, you'd be able to even email your, your, your sales rep, call them. Most of them, you know, you're able to call them late at night, too. So. I think there's probably you know an eight-hour eight-hour window where it's possible to talk to somebody, but I would email, call, and we can get that done pretty pretty quick, pretty quick for you. Yeah, I mean we we're here to enable you to sell um, as much as you possibly can, so we want to be able to do that for you. Quickly yeah, and if can. you're if you're upgrading, you're you're going to be sending an invoice, and so as quick as you sign that and get it back to us, um, we'll make sure your store gets allocated. Tahan asks. So if I back up 1,000 desktops, each having a Windows install at approximately 8 gigabytes, this is well over the 1 terabyte cloud space. That's correct. Can you elaborate more, Tahan, please? Yeah. I, I would love to be able to answer your question probably better. Ben asks, okay, so you have to pre-purchase, pre-arrange your storage space. Yes, that's absolutely correct, Ben. You're basically allocating... Uh, yeah, you're, you're purchasing your front. It's like anything else. If you wanted to sell pencils, you'd have to buy a thousand of them to get a good price. Yeah. Same, same thing. Um, is there an extra cost of storage fixed pricing? As, as most clients I have want to know how much uh, not sliding scale. <clears throat> so we have an extra storage cost pricing. <clears throat> so everything everything you see here in front of you is bundled, and of course you can you can buy extra terabytes for an extra number of dollars per month, and that's a lot cheaper. And what you see in front of you, and if you want to ask your sales about that, um, we try not to give the the, the 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 same price for everybody because they all want different packages sometimes. So your sales rep will be the best person to ask about extra storage, how much that is, but it's not a, a big number. Yep, absolutely, and it can be whatever you want it to be. Let's say that you need one terabyte plus another fifty gigs, and not you know three more terabytes. That's fine. We can definitely do that for you. Richard wants to clarify, I have clients with Mac servers hosted in data centers. You don't treat them as servers, yes? <laughs> well, I, I think what came in by that is is that um, our, our Mac client works on uh, OS X uh, you know, 10.6 and later. <clears throat> and um, what I think he was trying to say is that you know, we, we will consider that you know, our, our only backup application will work on that as well. <clears throat> As, as, as it would, you know, the client, because he uses the word application also as clients, client software. 
Paul asks, how many instances of the storage data do you retain? Is the data replicated within your own storage fabric for redundancy? If so, does this go out of Australia? So what we do is we, we, we back up data um, differently than, than, than our partner, I'm sorry, than our, our competitors do. Um, one of the things, you know, we are 40% faster than everybody else, which is nice, but another, another thing is we're the only company that gives you unlimited version history. So we actually don't set any retention, but we also don't charge you extra for it. Here's an example. <clears throat> you have an Alec PSD file. You start backing up on day one. Let's say it's 10 megabytes. You, you back that up for an entire year, and you now have 365 versions with SOS. And by, by the last day of the year, let's say your PSD file has increased to 4 gigabytes in size. You're only going to be using 4 gigs of all those versions. So what we do is we only charge you for the largest version of that set. <clears throat> so it's quite beneficial. That's why no one else offers it. We, the way we set up our software and our technology, it, it, we, it, we don't uh, lose ourselves at the bank by doing so. Cool. Thanks, John. Um, these Mac servers are running Karyo mail service. Lots of data and critical. Yeah, Richard, it's still, a, it's still an endpoint as far as we're concerned. Answer, answer doesn't change. So <laughs> yeah. any Mac device is treated as an endpoint regardless of the actual true nature of the, the yeah, endpoint. Yeah, and, and then of course still is subject to the same high level of encryption that we do with everything else. So It just doesn't use up a service I see. It's good news for you, Richard. Yeah, very good news for you. So uh, we are ready to move on from pricing and move on to a demo. If there aren't any other questions here. Nick says, does that mean if we back up hourly, you, you can 365 by 24 versions and only charge for the largest active one? That is correct. When he puts it like that, it doesn't seem like such a smart idea. But uh. <laughs> Well, for you guys, it seems like a smart idea. So, yeah, you've got the CEO and director of marketing in the room questioning ourselves. Yeah, Nick, we've been doing this for nearly 12 years now, um, and so it, it is very generous, but to John's point, we've got a lot of clever technology that minimizes our cost of storage on the back end and allows us to do all that for you and just bundle it into the price. Again, I, I do want to remind you guys that in order to be entered in the drawing for the Kindle, you do need to ask questions, so now's an, an awesome time when you've got a fall in the room, getting ready for the demo. Well, to answer your question, the, the data is stored on, on our hardware. <clears throat> so, yeah, our, our storage fabric for redundancy. <clears throat> so, um, if you were looking, if, if you're looking for, for two copies of the data in different places, that would be an additional cost. So, if you could clarify that there, I mean, we can have data go to Australia as your primary. We can have data go to the United States, which we have more redundancy built in here because it's cheaper. Um, but if you were looking for, for two copies of the data in two different data centers, there'd be additional cost for that. Ben says, uh, slightly unrelated to the current slide, but what level of data efficiency for bandwidth do you have? Are you doing delta copy or similar in any deduplication? We, we're doing binary uh, delta compression, Ben, so we are just extracting the block differences uh, between versions of files. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we're not doing client-side inter account deduplication because it sort of violates our security approach, um, but we, are, we do heavily optimize that data payload, so it's Generally speaking, the, with all cloud backup and replication software, the baseline payload is, is very large, and that's always the, the hump that you've got to get over. After that, the daily backups usually happen in minutes. Um, even if you're replicating large amounts of data, the, the, the difference set uh, that's generated on day two is tiny compared to the amount of data that's shipped on day one. Great. Thanks, Ken. Any other questions surrounding pricing? And then we'll move on to demo and we can ask um, very product specific questions and see exactly how it works. If not, okay, I am going to hand the controls over to John. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> what I've got for you guys is um, got a remote desktop connection here. I hope you guys can see the screen okay. <clears throat> if you um, if you're not able to see the uh, the virtual machine, I see the Windows version running in the background. Please let me know. But my intent is to show you my desktop, and hopefully we can see that okay. Uh, Richard and Nick say that they cannot see it. Okay. 
Let's see here. Thank you, gentlemen. Let me just fix, go to meeting here and see what's going on. It says that I'm paused, so let's just play it. So I, <clears throat> I just gave everybody full view there, so uh, hopefully everybody can see it. Let me know if that helped. Better, can't see, better got it. All okay, right. <laughs> excellent. So what I intended to show you here um, was first our partner dashboard. <laughs> Um, th our, we listen to our partners, and, and they always are giving the feature requests. So we want to accommodate them to keep them. You know, as far as retention, that's a good business practice. But also, you know, acquiring new customers, we need to build new features all the time. Um, and so we have a partner dashboard here. One of one of our biggest requests was update the news. We had that right at the top. That's what we wanted to see. <laughs> new update might come out. We'll listen there. We might have some some specials running. <clears throat> On the right hand side, we have the partner program resources. You can see there we have our partner support hotline. This is new this year, 2012. It's where when you call that, you're not getting our general support people or you're not getting the entire support staff. You're getting people that have only been trained in how to support our partners. <coughs> and that, that number that number is good um, um, you know, all the time. We also have live chat support. You just go to our website. You'll be able to talk with someone even, even, even in, in the odd hours of night. <coughs> um, you know, this 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 portal looks very simple. It's meant to be that that simple. We don't want to complicate things. So you can see there's only a few items we can do on this one page, but it links to everything else. Um, the first thing we have I want to show you here. You know, the second thing, sorry, is the online backup and recovery. You can see it shows how many gigabytes I've I've actually purchased as a partner. And I know right there it shows about you know 10, 10 or 100 terabytes there. But um, <clears throat> if you're a partner, it's going to show. Uh, <coughs> How much you have there, and how much you've allocated to your customers. So if you, you've allocated you know, about 90%, you call up your sales rep or email them, say, "Hey, I need some more. Send me an invoice, <clears throat> and you tell them how much. I want a, I want a terabyte." Um, we have a, a few buttons there: add add new account, view full list, go to customer shopping cart. <clears throat> um, you know, add new account is just what it says. It's where you go go there to actually create a new um, user account for your customer. This is just straight online backup. You bought this form. We some backup plans down here below for you to choose from. Uh, other other buttons on there is <clears throat> you know, view full list. I want to see all my user accounts. I hit that. <clears throat> they show up on the screen. Here they are. View actions lets me you know like uh, upgrade, cancel, um, reset a password, change the email address. I can view more details on their backup account. I hit view details, and I can see total uses. This customer hasn't you know backed anything up yet, but um, you know like there. So all of this brings you everything. It's all central location to bring you everywhere else you need to go. So we also have things like go to my shopping cart. We actually host a a, a, like a, a four or five page website where it's like a landing page for some online backup. It gives you more information about the software, about the service. There's a contact us page. There's even a sign up page <coughs> that we host. It's going to be a secure page. You're able to take PayPal payments, credit card payments, and the money goes into your bank account, not ours. We're not trying to be a middleman in that respect. <clears throat> um, so you're able to sign people to your website, sign up, or you can create accounts manually in the partner portal. <clears throat> um, other things in, 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 this, in this partner portal, there, there's more options here. I won't go into too much there, but uh, I'm able to manage my backup plans, change the pricing <clears throat> so it's available. Here's the, here's the content section. You can change the web pages, change the layout, add new pages. There's coupon codes. You want to get some discounts. Um, down here below, there's a, there's a mass emailing system. You can create a mass email to all your customers, free trial customers, um, and, and, and pick some different campaigns. <clears throat> all that's in here for you to use to manage the e-commerce website. Um, <clears throat> down here below, we have the server backup recovery. What this is is the the image creator, which is that that BDR solution that we've designed, where it's going to do um, it's going to back up your Windows machines as an image. It'll do each disk or partition as an image. Um, and then also we have the exchange grant recovery. So after you create a user account, you go in here, you manage license, you would assign one of those usernames to one of the available license keys, <clears throat> like that. After you do so, you would then use our server save installer to install all your applications and license them. <clears throat> you just click on this green button here to do that. Now I already have the server save installer downloaded on my desktop. <clears throat> I'm going to show you that right now. You can see it's right here. I launched server save. And this is just a small executable that you run. It doesn't need to be installed, actually. So I log in here as that customer, because I just created their, their account. I gave them 
I assign license keys to them. <clears throat> now once I log in, <clears throat> I'm going to be able to use these icons here to either install Online Backup Recovery Manager, which is used to back up your folders and files um, um, to the cloud as well as your images if you want to. We have the bare metal image creator. <clears throat> install that. Here's my license key. All right. <clears throat> install Exchange Grunner Recovery and license it. Here's the license file. You just save that. <clears throat> And we also have workstation backup <coughs> too that's, that's still there. Now this is an older version of our software. Uh, some of our partners still use it, but it's not being offered moving forward. Now this, this server save application here is just used for installation and licensing. I don't need to actually use it after I install. So I'm going to close it. <coughs> I'm going to go over to the online backup and recovery manager, as you can see right here. Very simple to use. We're not trying to complicate anything here. <coughs> it's a very powerful product, but very simple to use. We want to make it easy for you to backup and recover without having to activate anything on any of your machines. You're able to install this on all your desktops and laptops <coughs> and your file servers, and you're able to just install it, log in, and start backing up and recovering right away. It doesn't matter where you are. It's not, it's not based on the site or the location. <coughs> so I can very quickly go set up online backup. I only have a couple screens. Now this is new and exciting. You might have a lot of customers that don't know where the data is, or they don't know how to select it properly, or they're nervous about it. <coughs> this smart scanner, it has a bunch of uh, predefined file extensions, which are the most popular ones out there in business backup as far as documents, images, music, videos, and you can even do custom. <clears throat> now, I know most people like like you and maybe even myself been in IT for a long time. We like to expect the folders actually going back up, but this is very this is very easy for you to get your customers backed up without having to involve them in a long conversation or how much data they have or or, or, or they're worried about if everything's backed up properly, <clears throat> just based, based on extensions. If you do not want to use that, <clears throat> you can just click on Do Not Scan. I want to select manually. And this is just there's one more step to this, and then we're done. So I just select my, my files and folders. I can select a file on my desktop like this. I can select a folder on my C drive. I can select an entire drive letter on my F drive. <clears throat> but notice here, I have some, some shutterbreak images. Now, we use um, StorageCraft. That's our partner. We use them for the image backup <coughs> piece, local backup. <coughs> and then what we do is we then use our online backup recovery manager to back up those images to the cloud. So I hit next here. <coughs> this is the last step, pretty easy. Um, if, I, if I just want to change some settings, I uncheck this box, I don't want to back it up now. Or I leave it checked to run the backup now and then. Um, I might want to have this backup while I'm logged off. I type my credentials right there. And I can back up while the server is logged off. This is all powered by the Windows Task Scheduler. <clears throat> and I also can type my email address or to a report after the backup is finished. And in that report, you're going to get the machine name, username, uh, total amount of data backed up at that time, files that weren't backed up, if any, and so on. And then I just hit finish. <clears throat> and that, that's it. That, 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 that easy to do so. Uh, we, we are using VSS, so you will see um, you know, backup of open files. Um, earlier I mentioned we back up 40% faster than our competitors. Uh, that's because we changed the way we back up files. The old method is where we would copy your files to the hard drive first in a temp folder, then we would compress and encrypt and zip. And <clears throat> that method was great, but, but, it, but now it's too slow. Our new method is a streaming backup. It's going to compress and encrypt the files as it's sending them to the cloud. That's how we get that 40% gain in, in speed. Now, now that 40% gain that, that's without mentioning that we don't throttle. We only come with a different throttle. You know, I've seen fast backups it goes 65 megabit per second. So as fast as you can send it, we, we can take it. But just keep in mind, we, we are in, in compressing and encrypting in the, in, the, in the stream as it's going. So that's going to make it a little bit slower, of course. <clears throat> All right, so r restore. We have three different methods of restore, actually four. We have the restore wizard. The restore wizard is based on a calendar. So you can, you can <clears throat> go to restore wizard. Pick the bold date, you hit next, and you have to recover information from all your systems that you backed up. <clears throat> now, I recommend not backing up any more than 3 million files per backup account. Now, <clears throat> I know before we said, you know, example, we had, you know, 1,000 computers, 8 gigs um, on each per day. Now, we don't care about that. <clears throat> we care about the number of files. So try and keep it around 3 million. But I can actually do a simultaneous recovery here. I can select a folder from one machine a photo from another, and then I can recover that. <laughs> and when I do a recovery, I usually base it on a, the original path, because I want complete organization. You can see here I have two folders, Lasso Demo 7, Lasso Demo 12. 
These are actually f recoveries of, of multiple files in one recovery session. I open this up, I get the original path, C drive, users, user one, <coughs> desktop, and so on. There we go. Again, very easy. <coughs> the other method here is we have classic view. Classic view um, is, is very simple. This is what we started out with. But it's also the place we go and delete files. I just right click, I can recover or delete. <laughs> and the recovery method is exactly the same as the wizard. But the, one more thing in this view is actually lets you have version control. And um, you just go to the actual file itself and you'll see a drop down for any of those files or folders that have versions with them. You can see here I have a drop down and I can drop that down, I can see the date and time. <laughs> now our backup servers are, in, are <clears throat> and, and most of them are in Texas. So if you see some times that are maybe two hours off or from central time, you keep that in mind. Now I'm going I'm to close that. I'm going to go to our my account system, show you a couple more recovery methods. This is my favorite because um, well, being in IT for many years and working with tape and hard drive backup, <clears throat> whenever you want to do a recovery for a customer, you had to uh, go to the machine, do a, do a recovery, get those files um, recovered uh, you know, with the correct tape, and then get it uh, sent to that, that user. <clears throat> so what we have here is we have a simple method of choosing the machine where the data is backed up. We go to the location of the file. You can see here I have share recover. I can share recover any folder or file up to 500 megs. Now I just want to get one file. I do have versioning in here too. So I'm going to go to my desktop and you see I have a drop down right here next to a version of a file. <clears throat> I pick any file I want. Then I, I can recover that right here in the browser like that. Or I can hit share <clears throat> and I get this form that comes up. I, type, I just type in here a couple things. File. I can type them an email message. Here is that file you lost. You kind of be cute or cheeky as you would call it. And type in friend, type in their first name, type in their email address, and then hit submit. <coughs> I'm sorry, share. So th th they're going to get an email. That email will have a link inside of it. All I do is click on that, I'll click on that link, and it will download that zip folder or that file, and bam. You now have got a, 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 the file was backed up and encrypted to a user in about under a minute. And so um, you can do the same thing from your smartphone. You can share recover. So we have a generic website for our partners, m.manageoffsitebackup.net. And I can log in from my smartphone. And I can do almost the same thing, except I can't do any versioning. Um, so I, I basically get the latest version of the file. <clears throat> it's a little stretched out because it's on my computer. But if it's on a smartphone, it looks real nice. And you can also use your native Android and iPhone <coughs> apps for the same purpose. Um, which I, you guys probably all have something similar to that, I imagine. And if you um, also, really, really important point, sorry I jumbled up my sentence there, but this, this mobile system allows you to download and recover um, files that are 500 megs or less. I just want to point out that back on the software system, um, that is where you will download and recover your much larger files. Yeah, that, that, that is totally correct. So I, I didn't want to scare anybody there. I thought there were some recovery limits. It's just for the website. Um, so um, one more thing I want to show you in here is that we have the reporting section. The backup history report is based on date range. Um, the machine backup details report gives me all my systems, the total amount of use space per system, and the last backup date. <laughs> so I know that's kind of important even to your customers to do so. <clears throat> there is a search button in here too. You can search by file type. And you can type in either extension name, txt. You can type in the word, uh, you know, the name of the file. It's going to find a list of files of that. Um, you know, you have to sift through that, and it gives you a machine name and, and, and a local drive letter there. Oh, we've got a couple questions up, if you don't <coughs> mind pausing for some questions. Yeah. Uh, Travis asks, can you set the online backup and local backup data, uh, and local back data independently, i.e. have some files both online, locally and, online and locally, and then other files back up locally only, <coughs> not online? Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, so... The, the, the local backup software has an image. I'm going to go to that next. Now, gentlemen gentlemen, ladies, I, I am talking kind of fast because I know I'm showing features. I don't want to be too bored. So I'm going to show you multiple applications here. If you feel like I'm missing something or if you have any concerns about the backup, backup program, please ask it, and then I'll be able to answer it here on the phone. And hopefully all of you are following along okay. And Richard, <coughs> Richard has a great question that um, we can pause for too. Is there an iPhone and Android app for backup and restore? Yes, there is. There is a generic and SOS branded iPhone app for backup and restore right now, and there is an SOS branded Android app. In the next 30 to 60 ish days, there will be a generic branded Android app for backup and restore as well. <clears throat> All right. 
So I'm going to go back to the wizard here. <laughs> you can see we have online backup. Now the only backup piece of it there, we, we can only have one backup set for online, and, and it's in the schedule. <clears throat> it can run every hour or at different hours, <clears throat> nightly, weekly, monthly. <clears throat> Down here we have set up local backup. This is a separate application that we included, and it, it was designed to back up folders and files on PCs. <clears throat> that can have a separate schedule. However, when we talk about the image backup software, we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, Shadow Protect, powered by our partner StorageCraft. <clears throat> this software here, yes, it can have multiple local backup schedules and multiple destinations. <clears throat> what we would recommend is that you would have your first, um, you'd have your first backup schedule, your primary, as continuous incrementals. That's recommended by the entire industry and all of our partners. You go in here, you select your drives you want for backup. Maybe just your E drive for exchange, or maybe you want your C and your E drive, <coughs> vice versa. You still get an image per per partition there. You select your location. We actually recommend you go to a Windows location because um, that 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 storage device, if it's Windows, we can then can install our SOS application on it, upload to the cloud much faster than a NAS. <coughs> um, so uh, you can also back up to a local drive, maybe like a USB drive, something like that. Hit next. And you can see here, continuous incrementals. I'm showing this because I want to explain it real quick. <laughs> this method is recommended because it uses the least local and online storage space. Because it only has one full backup image and the rest are incremental images. This is the most popular method because people don't need to do a full backup once a week or once a month anymore. It's just not necessary. That was, that was uh, uh, predicated on um, how many tapes you could purchase or afford to purchase or how big they were. And that's why they did many fulls. So th this actually recommended this can run for six months to a year without actually changing the backup job. Now you'll notice the top and bottom as far as uh, incremental backups. The top portion is used for once a day backups. The, the bottom portion is used for multiple backups per day. <laughs> so if you're interested in, in about, you know, in, in several backups per day, you just use the bottom portion and say, I want to run a backup between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, with, with 60 minute intervals. <clears throat> and if you didn't like that, you want to once per day, uncheck all these boxes, just use the top portion. Now moving on here, we have an option screen. You can have a password and encryption on your images. We actually recommend you do split your image files up. <coughs> um, you can choose high compression if you want to. Again, but the recommended is by is industry standard, which is about 50% of the use space of a disk. And we have advanced. We do have performance throttling in here. So if you're worried about one of your servers being brought to its knees during the backup, you can throttle that down. We do, we do recommend the MD5 checksum file. Under the image tab, we have the self-healing incremental recovery. <laughs> There's self-healing in the online backup and recovery manager, and there's self-healing in the ShadowPick software. If there's a corruption with an image, it's going to purge that, wait to the next backup, and recreate it. <coughs> and so th that's one of my favorites there. If you have some special scripts you want to run, maybe you want to run a manual backup of SQL, um, <coughs> or you know, the, the software itself is going to backup SQL when it backs up the disk, transaction consistent, using those via the routers for SQL, Oracle, Exchange, Let's say you have another database that doesn't have a backup utility and it has to be stopped first. You can put your script in right here and it will stop the database real quick and you put another script in there to start it back up and so on. And then I would just basically run the backup. <clears throat> so after I set up my, my, my continuous incremental backup job, I could go new and I could select another backup job for different data as an image. So hopefully that answers your question. <clears throat> now I want to keep going here. We have network view. You can see here that I can manage another, another node on my network. This has built-in centralized management. So wherever Shadow Protect is installed, you can manage other systems <coughs> from that. You can change the backup job, you can look at the backup history, <coughs> and, and so on. <coughs> now, um, with that said, sometimes we have some of the IT guys that want to manage the backups from their desk, from their laptop. You can install Shadow Protect on your desktop or laptop without, without paying for a license because you're allowed to use the recovery and management features for free. But if you try and run a backup, it'll say, hey, give me a license key, please. <clears throat> Hopefully that's clear. Now, there are some recovery methods in here. The restore button here, you would use the restore drive other than the system drive or the C drive. And you could take one of these images here, like the E drive, and restore it over the E on my, on my system here. And um, it would do that live. We have explore backup where it lets you mount an image as a drive letter. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to perform that for you without having the software open. I can just go here and I can actually right click on one of my images and mount it like this. Quick mount. Now, you saw mount there, hopefully. Mount, the only thing different there is it gives you more features and information about the image. You can choose your drive letter, 
You can choose it to uh, allow it to be written to while it's mounted, and so on. Usually, people just do quick mount, and you can see it creates a drive letter for us. And um, on this G drive, that's our mounted image. I can open it up. I can pull out a fire or a folder if I want to. <clears throat> now, quickly moving on. Again, if you have questions, let me know. I'll slow down. Uh, we could go and do an EGR recovery. So from my mounted image as a drive letter, I can go and connect to the EDB file in that image. You can see here above on the, the source in the, in the blue area, it shows the G drive exchange. That's my mounted image. And I can open up any of my, uh, my items in here. I can export any of the items. Most people don't actually export too often because they will go down here and actually create a connection to the live exchange server and all the mailboxes like I've done. And they actually can drag and drop items into the, into the live mailbox. I'm going to go and delete this message here. And I'm going to go bring it back. So I'm going to click on user one's mailbox. I'm going to use the search tool, which I love. I'm going to type in some criteria. The subject line might be Nortel. It was from user two. I hit find now. And it's quickly found the message. I can open it up and verify it. I can also export it if I want to. You can export a message format or PST. But I just want to actually restore it live. And I just drag and drop this to the user's inbox. And this is going to do a restore for me. If it's already there as a duplicate, it'll say duplicate message not copied. <coughs> now that drag and drop method I can use for any item. If I need to do a mailbox level recovery or recover a calendar, I just drag the item down below to that person's mailbox. Or if I need to do a mailbox level recovery, I just drag over the server name. And if the mailbox isn't there, it'll ask a wizard to say, hey, do you want to create this mailbox that doesn't exist? You would say yes, follow the wizard, <coughs> and so on. You can use this to recover, like I said, messages, mailboxes, entire databases, and use it for exchange migration. I love this tool. Very powerful and easy to use. Um, and I don't see any questions, so I'm going to keep going. <coughs> uh, that one. To recover, do you need to stop backing up? <coughs> So if you're, if you're backing up images, the answer is no. You, you can be backing up and recover at the same time. So I can have a recovery going on right now, let's say, and I can go to my storage media, I can right click, and I can mount an image <laughs> because that image has already been created. We have another question from Nick. Uh, Nick asks, can I remotely restore a file to a client without emailing it? <clears throat> um, so if you want to remotely restore a file without, without emailing using the web recovery, <clears throat> um, I think it would actually take you longer to go and recover it and, and then get it to a user. <clears throat> so the, the web recovery system and sharing is much faster. Now, if you're talking about if you actually want to do a recovery and have it appear in their machine, we don't, we, no, we, we don't do that. We don't have that because in the past, in our experiences in backup industry, is that whenever people were asked, do you want to restore to the original location or to that machine, people tend to overwrite data they didn't want to overwrite. <laughs> so we, we took that out years ago. So when you do a restore, you can either restore it from your office, you just log into the software using the password of that customer, and you can do a restore there. You can remote connect to their server, do a restore there. You can also use the My Account system to share a file with them. <clears throat> um, Let's see here. Now, I, I showed everything very fast at a high level for you. Again, I want to keep you guys excited. Do you have any questions about doing bare metal backup recovery of physical machines and virtual machines? I can recover that image to the same hardware, dissimilar hardware, a virtual environment. <laughs> that, does, that doesn't matter. There's, a, there's an ISO boot disk, um, or, I'm sorry, ISO or, or boot disk that you can use to boot to if you need to um, do bare metal recovery. And that works in, in, that works in, in VMware as an ISO. It works in Hyper-V as an ISO and, <laughs> and, and Zen Server, um, as well as different hardware. Ben, I have a question. Can I assume that Shadow Protect is Windows only? That's right. Windows, it, it is Windows only as far as images. <clears throat> so if you need to back up data that's not, that, that's, that's not um, as far as backup as an image, um, that's not Windows, you would use our online backup recovery manager or our Mac um, application to back up the folders and files. Now, if you want to back up data from a Linux machine or, or from something else, you know, there is some, some cheaper Linux backup software there as an image. Have that be saved to one of your Windows staging servers. We'll back it up that way, too. <coughs> uh, Richard asks, when emailing a file, does the receiver need any of the software? <clears throat> no. When, when they receive the email, they click on a link. It's a secure link, and it uses their browser to just download that file. Mm -hmm. So, yes. You could email an invoice 
um, to a client, of course. You can email your QuickBooks uh, database to somebody if you needed to, as long as it's under the, those 500 megs. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Richard asks, do you need to get something for that throat of yours? Yes, I do. We'll Sorry. Get, we'll get John a, a lozenge later on. Thanks for your concern. Uh, ben says, is there any local backup options for Mac, or is this cloud only? Um, right now, there, there is no local backup options for Mac. It, it's, it's cloud only at the moment. What are your plans for Windows 8? <coughs> wow, I wish Ken was here. Ken can't step out, unfortunately, but I wish he was here for that question. We plan to um, build something for Windows 8 when it comes out. We're not, we're not really too worried about it. Um, when, when, Windows, when Vista came out, Windows 7 came out, we, we were able to get there very quickly. We do um, you know, use .NET, so it is Microsoft um, supported. So us building something for Windows 8, we're not worried about it because um, we're, we're a Microsoft shop and we're, we have experts in that field. <coughs> um, so again, I just want to remind you guys, I know I went fast on showing you the software, and I feel like some of you have some concerns or questions. Please let me know what those are right now. Are you able to show a demo of their branding customization? <coughs> um, let's see here. We might have a few screenshots, <coughs> might we? Um, I can show you. Let, let me show you one of our partner websites that we did for them and that we host. Um, let's see. BC backup.ca. Here's one of the sites that we actually built um, in 2011. And we and we host this, so you can see here. You know, we use their logo, their name, everything like that. And there's there's some different buttons you can click on down here. This will download the client. This will download the vulnerability scanner. Um, need some help? There's some documents that they could read. Um, the there's a sign up page, so it allows them to, to sign up for an account, choose their account size, pay with PayPal or a credit card. Um, there's a web, there's a link to the web login, so they can share and recover their files. Contact us. When they fill this out, you'll receive a ticket inside your management portal right here, like view support tickets, and then you can respond to those with, with any comments that you want to give. <laughs> and you know, I should have mentioned earlier when we were on the, the web integration package and looking at the, um, the shopping cart that you, that you can use with uh, PayPal offers and that, or eWay, <coughs> that you can customize those prices. Those prices are not set there for you. Um, you're, you're able to change that to whatever you like. An example of the branding is you can see in this client here, we have at the bottom left hand corner we have the SOS logo. Your logo will go there, and any any in any place on the screen where you see SOS on the backup, it'll be replaced with your name. That's how we do our branding. And the the my account system, um, I think I'm still logged in. You have this blue banner here at, with our logo. It'll be a, it'll be your banner banner there with your logo. So when you come on board as a partner, um, you'll be asked to provide your logo as well as a choice of hex colors, and that will be used. To, to make these modifications. And then you'll also have the flexibility later on um, to use the WYSIWYG editor within the web integration package. No HTML knowledge required, just a simple WYSIWYG editor. You'll be able to use that to change your metadata. You'll be able to use it to change the content on the website. You can change <coughs> pictures. You can change links, whatever you like to. Did everybody like the, the demonstration that I made with all the backup software? Um, yeah, we want to make sure that you guys saw what you needed to saw and you needed to see. Excuse me. Yeah. And uh, later on, you're you're definitely welcome to have a conversation with your partner specialist, and we sort of hope you do. And uh, you'll be able to do an ROI analysis and see exactly what you can expect to make based on the type of customers that you have and the type of package that you may be coming into as well as another product demo, screenshots of the product, and some more conversation about branding. Yeah, uh, uh, Nick says, awesome, I like the speed. <laughs> uh, very, uh, Andrew, very impressive. Is it HTTPS, the web access? Yes, it is. It is a secure, secure site. Um, is the hosting included in the partner monthly fee? It, it, it is included. <clears throat> some of you will need to actually pick your domain name because we do have a, another website that we use for this. Um, <clears throat> So it has to be separate because our APIs can integrate possibly, and um, that might cost you about ten dollars a year. Andrew asks, uh, "Will the slide deck be available for us to download?" You'll actually get a video of this webinar tomorrow emailed to you, and your partner specialist can definitely give you the slide deck. So I know Ken asked earlier how many of you do not know who your partner specialist is. Um, 
if you come on maybe later or you didn't answer that question, please let me know now. Um, just type don't know into the chat and I'm going to use this chat uh, to refer to our staff and get them in touch with you. Sorry, when we, when we said chat, we meant questions. Whatever yeah. you're doing right now is perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you for reading my mind. I appreciate it. <laughs> wow, a lot of you don't know. I am sure sorry about that. We are going to fix that. No problem. We'll have them reach out to you as soon as possible. Yes. Ben asks, do you ever contact our clients if contact details are entered into your system? No, absolutely not. Only you contact your clients. Is there a demo for clients? <clears throat> so you, the partner, you have the ability to give out free trials. And the way we manage that is, is that your free trials will last for like 15 days. And then <clears throat> if you remove them, then we don't charge you for them. However, also with, with Shadow Protect, that, that setup file itself, it is, it, it's always a trial to start off with for 30 days. So you can always install that, you get 30 days, or before you actually have to use one of your license keys. And in regards to demos, we've also been asked about demo environments. Um, in, in the next day or two, um, you know, we're, we're, for our partners to actually sign up, we're going to be releasing a, a, a new feature here where we're actually going to be able to send you uh, a virtual machine of one of our demo servers. That, 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 that's just the one that I showed you here, <clears throat> where it has Shadow Protect, uh, EGR installed, on the back of a query manager installed, <laughs> and you'll be able to actually demonstrate using that where it's already set up for you. And we're going to provide that in the Shadow Protect format, the, the VMware format, and, and the Hyper-V format, and, 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 and also with Zen Server for you, too. <laughs> You'll be able to download it for us. But you must be a partner in order to do that. Now, that's, that's, that's for you to demo after your partner. Now, of course, currently, if you don't have a free trial from us yet, then you know, please tell us, um, and, and you always can tell your, your partner specialist, but we'll get you out a free trial. You'll be able to test out online backup. You'll be able to test out image backup software as well, EGR, dashboard, all those things. Richard asks, uh, selling to the Mac platform, do all your tools work for the Mac user? So <clears throat> when you backup online using the Mac client, <laughs> you can also restore on that. You can also restore Mac files using the Windows um, on the backup application as well. You'll also be able to use the My Account system, so basically the website, share and recover files, the mobile portal, share and recover files, and, and, and so on. So um, as far as those tools, yes, all the recovery tools are available for, for Mac clients. Richard, Mark, some, I'm sorry, do you mean that you don't have a, a partner account? I think Richard asked um, about the demo account, I think. And I explained. An online test account. <laughs> okay, we, we'll get you a free trial. <clears throat> yes, your partner specialist can provide you a, a free trial. And no problem. You said that you don't know who your partner specialist is, so we'll get you one. Don't worry. Any other questions? Uh, remember, you do have to ask the question to be entered in the drawing for the Kindle, which we would love for you to have. Do we have another poll, Shaylin, or the polls over? Polls are over. Okay. I think everyone's probably tired of polls. I actually like polls, gentlemen. Um, it helps get the brain working. I mean, we all are in business here to make money, and, and some of us actually focus too much on the, as far as IT guys, we focus too much on the you know, monitoring and management of our customers, and we, and we forget to make money sometimes on, on an incremental basis, <laughs> on a recurring revenue basis, and, and that's what this is. So um, any business type questions, you know, maybe you have those two, or, or you know, you're concerned about a certain feature. Yeah, and I want to let you know um, about a couple new changes here. We've recently installed the capability to have automatic updates in the software, so anytime there is an update, you'll be notified of that. And we've also recently introduced a business development manager um, into our team. So post-sale, uh, when you're getting ready to go out in the market and sell the product, you have him. His name is Mike Zerudi, and he is here to help you. And he does work later in the day, U.S. hours, so he will be available to you. Um, he's there to help you with materials. He's there to help you with um, items like email marketing, if you haven't done that before. Um, he's here to help you with collateral, sell sheets, all those things like that, and just general um, go-to-market strategy for you. Nick says that was fantastic, and he's keen to sign up now. Awesome. That's great, Nick. 
Anyone else? Um, how does this sound to you? Are you ready to go? Do you have any, any remaining questions? Richard says he appreciates our info and time. Absolutely. Richard McIntosh says he's ready to go. Excellent. And Ben says thank you. All right. No further questions. OK. It, it is an awesome product. Shirag, thank you very much, and we think so too. We think that you'll love it. We'll hang on for 30 seconds or so more here if there are any other uh, product pricing questions. Yes, Travis wants to get his customer migrated out of Mosey, as you well should. He'll be much happier. All right, if there are any more questions, um, we'll go ahead and bid you good night for us, and we hope that, oh, Richard Marks asks, uptime. <laughs> as far as uptime, we, we, we give a 99.9% .9 uptime of our service. Now, the data center companies we use, you know they always have the five nines. They give us, you know, usually 35 ISPs connected to the building. Um, they, they have, th you know, three days of, of diesel gas, you know, diesel fuel to keep it running. They have, you know, 14,000 square better backup rooms. <laughs> so uptime is huge with power and internet. But however, it is possible sometimes that one of our servers might have uh, a service crash that might be down for 10 minutes, or or, or it's possible maybe that, that uh, a motherboard might might fry itself. It might take an hour to replace that. But um, you know, we do we don't we don't go down. I mean, our our software and our store systems. We use the best in the market. It, it is a very proven storage system that's very reliable. So that's why our SLA is 99.9% because once in a while, you might be down for 10 minutes or an hour. <clears throat> Richard McIntosh, do you have another question, sir? How do we protect ourselves from liability? Um, well, the, sorry, the, I don't have a good answer for that. Well, the EULA is ours. I mean, SOS is still you know, <clears throat> responsible how the data is backed up <clears throat> and and <clears throat> in the software itself. And, and we're responsible if, if something goes bad. <clears throat> so, you know, our insurance policy will cover that and, and, and cover you in that, in that instance. Um, so, and being that you're recommending a third-party a third party solution, um, you know, it takes away a lot of liability there. there. There is a EULA in the product. If you are worried about reliability, then you want to make sure your customers install the software and they look at the EULA and they install it. <laughs> But otherwise, you know, if you're selling it for them, then you have to understand that some of the liability is, is in your hands a little bit <clears throat> because you installed the software. So I have just put up on the screen um, our international call-in number. Uh, if any of you would like to call in and speak to our staff, that is the number that you will call. Plus one, three, one, oh, eight, seven, eight, two, six, two, six. As far as Nick, um, looking just looking up in your system, uh, I know some of you on on here actually just told us you were keen to sign up right now. But Nick, can you give me can you give us your your company name? Uh, maybe Nick has. Oh, Nick is there. Okay, There great. we go. Email address is always preferred. I hope you find things. Thank you very much. Great. Well, if there are no more questions, we'll sign off. Okay. Thank you, Shirag. Yes, Bronwyn. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you much, everybody. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to join our webinar and, and watch my demo and listen to Shailen give you marketing and pricing advice. Thank you all very much for joining us, and we hope that you enjoyed it and learned everything you need to learn.